It's an honor to be here with everyone. George Floyd, a name, a life, and a murder that has awoken a nation to the lingering inequality and systemic racism faced by so many Black Americans. We stand in solidarity with the Black Lives Movement. And as allies, this is a time for us to listen and to take action. And behind the palpable anger and grief and sadness that has fueled this powerful and needed moment of collective consciousness raising is love. Love of life, love for each other, love for freedom and possibility. And love is what brings us all here. Yes, we are against cruelty and violence and exploitation, but those are merely actions of fear and disconnect, love unrealized. We are here as advocates for kindness and for compassion. Growing up on a small farm in Ohio, my mother Joyce taught me at a young age that animals were to be both respected and loved. Regardless of the physical form we come in, regardless of whether we are covered with fur, feathers, or scales, regardless of whether we walk on two legs or four, if we swim or fly, if we talk or squawk, we are all part of the same whole the same unifying consciousness, something that John spoke so beautifully about. And today, International Animal Rights Day, we give gratitude and appreciation to animals for their presence, for their honesty. And if we are willing to watch and listen, they can teach us so much. They can teach us about healing from trauma, trusting again, and the courage it takes to express love when we've only received cruelty. Webster Dictionary, defines love in many ways, but one is the unselfish and benevolent concern for the good of another. And this is something that animals express on a daily basis, including animals who are condemned to life inside of factory farms. I'm reminded of a story relayed by James, a former Mercy for Animals investigator who worked at a pig factory farm in Pennsylvania. One morning, when he arrived to the factory farm, he swung open the shed door, stepped inside, and saw a sea of metal crates, farrowing crates, confining mother pigs and their babies. But out of the corner of James's eye, he saw one mother pig wandering around in the aisles, experiencing a moment of freedom, trailed behind her were her baby piglets. The workers put this mother sow back into her crate and locked it behind her. The next morning when James arrived, this same mother sow, using her intellect and her curiosity, but also her drive for freedom, used her tongue and used her snout to once again free herself by lifting the bar of her cage. But this time she wasn't alone. She had gone around and unhinged the cage door, confining dozens of other mother pigs and their babies. This to me is such a beautiful, poetic, powerful story of animals expressing love, benevolent concern for others, even in the dark corners of factory farms. Acts of kindness benefit the giver as much as the receiver. We are born with an innate, innate sense of altruism, and this is why it feels good to do good, why we find comfort and love, why we seek peace and joy, and why we are pulled towards fairness and justice. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And make no mistake, love is not passive. It is a verb, it is a muscle that must be flexed and strengthened. And it is our generations that are being called to action. We all find ourselves here at this same moment in our planet's evolution of consciousness raising that we are called for a purpose, a purpose to move the needle forward, to see more clearly, to replace domination with compassion, greed with generosity, and ego with gratitude. If we work together, we will see an end to animal exploitation in all of its forms, we will heal our planet and we will extend our ethical circle to our fellow creatures. This is our collective challenge. Let's meet it. Thank you.